often asked, how is IoT going to change the world? And let's face it, we've all seen some very rash promises about the transformational effects of IoT. So let's pause for a moment and, and look at the different ways in which IoT can potentially change the way we live, the way our processes work, the way we run our businesses, and the way we interact with our environment. And let's start by recapping on what IoT is. Essentially, IoT is the use of technology that connects to the network to better understand the environment, the things that operate within that environment, and the people that move within that environment. So it's about sensing and gathering data. And of course, the key to that is then, what do we do with that data? And there are kind of two different strands here. There are those things that are going to be genuinely transformational. And there are one or two domains where IoT really can potentially transform the way we live and work. And then there are those more incremental improvements that IoT is going to bring to us. More incremental things we can do to improve the processes that our businesses rely on just a little bit in order to get a little bit more efficiency out of them. I think the most powerful example of truly transformational use of IoT lies in telehealth, remote medicine. All across the world, and particularly in Europe, we're facing a crisis about how do we fund our health systems. There has to be a massive change in the way healthcare is delivered, in the way chronic conditions are managed, and in the way people get access to health services. And the ability to push health management out away from expensive hospitals and doctor surgeries promises to make a significant contribution to addressing that huge financial challenge that we face and ensuring that we can deliver health care to a population that's living longer, living longer with chronic conditions um, and in need of, of, of longer and often more complex health care. So imagine the ability to monitor someone's heart without having to bring them in to an expensive um, a hospital and plug them into an expensive uh, piece of equipment. In managing, um, imagine being able to monitor someone's blood sh sugar level automatically behind the scenes and manage the, uh, the, the treatment regime automatically as a result of that data. And of course, imagine a system where if, if an anomaly occurred, there was some issue that the doctor could immediately be alerted and intervention could be put in place sooner rather than later. These are domains where I think the use of IoT can really, really help to change the way we, we function as societies and the, the way we deliver some of these essential services like healthcare. And so, personally, I'm a little sceptical about the life-changing ability of a Fitbit or a, um, um, a, a fitness bracelet, but the, the ideas and the concepts that wearable sensing technology are proving out today, I think are going to have a very big impact on the way fundamental services like healthcare are delivered tomorrow. Let's go to the other end of the spectrum and look at those more mundane processes. And here's, here's the dirty truth about the IoT. 99% of all IoT devices are going to be invisible, they're probably going to be grey, and many of them are going to be covered in dirt because they're going to live inside the infrastructure, whether it's inside machines in factories or whether it's glued onto the side of containers um, that, that, that travel from port to port, uh, carrying goods and um, helping fuel the world economy. Though, those are the domains where the vast majority of these little connected devices are going to live. And this is going to be boring. It's going to be dull, but it's going to make those small differences to the way processes work that will ultimately result in, in billions and indeed trillions of dollars of saving in the, in, in, in savings in the world economy as we improve the way we process things. A very simple example is monitoring things while they're in transit. You can imagine a container full of expensive glass products and you can imagine the embarrassment when that container arrives at its destination, they open the door and all of its contents have been shattered because at some point in, in the journey, that container has been dropped. Well, imagine then putting a device into that container that just measured the 
the, the, the shocks that that, that that container was subjected to on its journey. You could identify exactly where that container was dropped, understand exactly what went wrong. Um, obviously, the insurance company would be delighted to know whose fault it was as well. But it's monitoring things in transit will enable us to, to run our supply chains far more effectively. If we look more deeply into the bowels of our key infrastructure, whether it's our water systems, our electricity uh, supply systems, electricity companies have been rolling out effectively the IoT in the form of smart grids for over a decade now. And they're still in the early stages of figuring out how to really exploit that data and, and how to manage it most effectively. But that's the heart of the IoT. These are domains where a fraction of 1% of process improvement is going to make a big difference to the ultimate bottom line. So the IoT is going to be this combination of one or two domains where it's going to be transformational to the extent that we'll be asking ourselves how we ever coped without it in the past. But the lion's share of the IoT is going to live in those domains where we're actually making very small but really important incremental improvements to processes. There's a third domain that I'd like to talk about, which exists frustratingly halfway between the transformational and the incremental in terms of the improvements it promises to bring. And that's within the domain of agriculture. So when it comes to incremental improvements, there are all sorts of ways that we can use in sensing technology to simply improve the efficiency of the process of growing crops or uh, managing livestock. So take, for example, in arable farming. A big concern of arable farmers is have they over fertilized one part of their field and not fertilized um, um, enough in another part of their field. Using things like unmanned aerial vehicles, whether they're um, slow moving planes or fast moving uh, um, um, quadcopters, to look at the state of your crop as it's growing enables you to see which patches are either under fertilized or maybe underwatered. So you can manage your, your, your crop more holistically. That's going to improve yields um, and as you move on. The ability to actually deploy sensing technology into the soil to really accurately measure the presence of nutrients, the presence of moisture and so on, again, enables us to drive more productivity um, out of um, the, the land that's available to us. There's another domain, of course, which is particularly true in the West, which is food wastage. It's how do we manage the food supply chain such that we don't waste up to a quarter of the food, um, particularly in fresh produce that, 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 that is created um, and, 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 and bought? How can we reduce the amount um, that we throw away and how can we maximise the amount that actually makes its way through the full cycle rather than simply ending up in landfill. So being better able to manage supply chains, make supply chains more responsive to demand, um, better manage wastage in that supply chain will have a significant effect on our ability to feed a growing global population. Mm -hmm.